What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the playoff recap. We are here to talk about basketball. Hey, people were mad at me yesterday. Oh, <laughs> people were mad at me yesterday. Yesterday we had two blowouts, so two games that I didn't have much to say about. And y'all know around here, I'm not gonna force myself to do an episode just because there's basketball played. So I didn't do an episode, and my mentors was filled with fans like, "Ah, oh, when when my t- my favorite team wins, Kenny is never talking about us." I had nothing to say. I just, I'm just i just not going to force it. But today, on the other hand, we had two, yes, I said two games of playoff basketball because that first thing, we counted as a scrimmage, and I have nothing to say about it, okay? Let's talk about the Clippers. You know, because over the past year, I have been the guy, I've been one of the guys to give the Clippers the benefit of the doubt. I've been one of the guys to defend the Clippers on, on multiple conversations with friends, on my podcast, this and that. It's over, bro. I'm done giving them the benefit of the doubt. Next time we are giving them the benefit of the doubt, boy, y'all better have showed me a lot. Because if you remember before the playoffs, I came onto the show and I said, I can't imagine the Clippers losing the last two games of the season, one of them being against OKC, who are at that point, were like the worst team of all time. They were doing it right. They know what they're doing. They're tanking. They're they're successful, you know, um, and they're all right. They lost a game against them, and I forgot, there was one more game at the end of the season that they lost against a team that wasn't in the play-in, and then Ty Lue comes to the podium like, no, we're not trying to mess with the seeding. We just want our guys to be healthy and rested for the playoffs, when in reality, they were trying to seed themselves to get the more favorable matchup and avoid the Lakers. But here they are against that favorable matchup, losing two games at home, Losing two games at home, and I'm done. I am done saying that they could do this, they could do that. And again, the series is not over, but I think the statistic that they showed at the end of this, I think it was 96 point yada percent of the time if a team goes up 2-0, they win the series. And I bet that doesn't even account for a lower seed doing it and taking home court advantage convincingly. And the people on my Twitter timeline like, yeah, it's a big deal that the Clippers are down 2-0, But the last time Kawhi was down 2-0, he came back and won a series against the Milwaukee Bucks. That happened a few years ago, if you don't remember, when he was with the Raptors. They went on to win the championship. You know the story. But it's so much different. It is so much more different because he was down 2-0 as the lower seed. So he lost two games in a row. whoop de doo He just had to take, you know, he had to take one away, or I guess two away from them. This is completely different. They had home court advantage and fumbled twice this is insane bro and i cannot and i I may be in a minority here i cannot pinpoint what about this team needs to be fixed or things that i want to see differently for them to end up winning you know because because tyron lu did make a few changes today one of the few changes was actually a successful one he played terrence man today terrence man pra- practically got zero minutes in the first game he came in terrence man is a positive defender he hit some shots i would say he was a, a net positive in this overall game so he tried to come in and make some changes but with that like Sergi Baca didn't play I can't look at Luke Kennard making 18 million and not he's getting DMPs in a playing game, a playoff game, making 18. This man is what the third, fourth highest playing uh, paid player on your entire team. He's getting DMPs right now, insane. I don't, I like I said, I don't know what it is. Like typically we come in here like, oh, I want to see this and that. Like remember when we talked about the Lakers losing game one, I was like, Marcus Saul has to play. Bada boom, bada bam, Marcus Saul plays and they play significantly better and they win. I'm not saying I'm, <laughs> I'm the coach of the year, but like there are some things you can look at and be like, that's what you need to change. That is the biggest thing, and I don't know what it is. This man Kawhi Leonard, balling absolutely balling, especially in that first half. What, he had 30 going into the half? And he he was, like, exerting all this energy on the offensive side of the ball. But, like, they have so many good defenders, right? Marcus Moore Sr., Paul George, Patrick Beverly, Nicholas Batum, Rajon Rondo. Well, I guess maybe not Rondo so much nowadays. These are all guys that are good def- good defenders that you should be able to put on Luka to not stop Luka because he's Luka. We're going to talk about the greatness of Luka in a minute. But to slow down Luka so you don't have your guy that already gave you 30 also have to kill it on the defensive side of the ball. But they couldn't do it. So Kawhi had to drop 41, and then he also had to guard Luka Doncic. And here's a spoiler alert. Kawhi Leonard is not a heavy minutes guy anymore. It's just a fact that this whole quad thing that happened three years ago, four years ago, and he's still resting, still low managing. He is one of those dudes that you should not 
play 40 minutes because he hits this thing. He's going to hit a wall where he's just not as effective because he just can't do it anymore. His body, his, his body has been going through the, the everything, you know? So him playing 40 minutes of him giving you 41 points and also trying to guard Luka is insane. And they just can't do it. You know, they just can't do it. I just, uh, oh my God, I'm done. I'm just done defending this team. Show me. Come back in this series. I won't, I'm not saying nothing else positive until you come back in this series. Because if you don't, oh my God, the Clippers are looking bad. Just two years ago, Clippers fans, I know, um, first of all, shout out to you for actually watching this video. Because this could be a de definitely a day where you turn off social media and you just, you get away from it. I know it's hard right now. Two years ago, you had one of the most fun teams in the league. You had an 8C, was an 8C, 8C, 7C that was down the biggest, the biggest, um, what is the word? They were losing by the most points in a single playoff game is what I'm trying to say. And they came back and won. Shea Gilgis Alexander, Gallinari, Lou Williams. That team was amazing. That team was fun. And you threw it all away, plus the future of your team, to get Paul George and Kawhi to construct this not a nano super team. It's not a super team, but it was like a, a, a constructed team that was built to win a championship. Sam Preston them got all those picks, got a future star in Shea Gilgis Alexander, and y'all might not get out of the first round after last year not being able to get out of the second round. Two years ago, y'all were fun. A team with Kawhi, a team with Paul George. A team with Patrick Beverly and and uh, now Rajon Rondo, this should be a fun team to watch. And it is the exact opposite. Even in the regular season where things were looking good, I've come on this show and say, yeah, they're winning games, but visually it's not fun to watch. Even though statistically they have the best offense in the league, they have one of the best defenses in the league, it just wasn't pleasing to the eye. And now it's even worse because you're not winning. It's insane. Let's talk about the Dallas Mavericks because, well, I know this is a 4-5 matchup, but it's not at the same time. The Dallas Mavericks, talent-wise, don't really match up against the Clippers. And now that I'm saying this, maybe that's not even true. Maybe all of the talent on the Clippers is extremely overrated. We just see them and we're like, oh, this player, this player, this player. These are all great players. When in reality, maybe they aren't. But anyway, back to my original thought. They just aren't a team that many people pick to even get out of five. That's dead now. Maybe losing six. I don't know many people that picked the Dallas Mavericks to win this series. Even though they have do I want do they have the best player in the series? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Even though they have a generational type talent at the helm who showed us last year that in the playoffs, this man can up his play even more from being like what fourth, fifth, and MVP playing. This this man, Luka Doncic, and I, I don't know how many words can explain how amazing this man is. As a team, <laughs> as a team, they shot 50% from the free throw line. That cannot like if they would have lost this game, because the Clippers did have this little run towards the end. If they would have lost this game, it would have pointed directly, directly to the free throw shooting. Um, they shot 58% from the field, <laughs> which is more than their free throw, 53% from the three, which is close to their free throw percentage and 54 percent from the free throw line insane tim hardaway jr was way more than a roster or, or a salary filling guy when the poor zingas trade went down you know what i'm saying like they were talking about this on the broadcast i think at the end of it they were like oh i know the knicks regret this and i'm like i don't think they do not saying that, you know what i'm saying the knicks are <laughs> the knicks are doing quite okay right now they don't really they're not looking at oh man we shouldn't have traded away tim hardaway jr they're doing completely okay you know but tim hardaway jr being that guy because everybody knew that tim hardaway jr can hoop everybody knew and like i said in the last episode i love a guy that's hot going into the playoffs and he continued that streak today everybody knew he can hoop the the main thing for tim hardaway jr has always been his consistency he can go four games averaging 20 then he'll have five games averaging 12 and bad efficiency but in the playoffs so far he has been stellar porzingis had a better game than the first even though there are a few times because the Clippers went ultra small in the end of this game and then the Mavericks stuck to their guns they played Porzingis they were playing Max again even before Max came back in the game they had Dwight Powell Porzingis had like was it Reggie Jackson and Rondo guarding him it's like nah I'm gonna sit here at 20 feet out I mean, I guess it don't matter at the end of the day, but there's definitely one play on the low post where Porzingis had, had uh, Rondo on him. The man didn't put the ball on the floor to, like, maybe back Rondo down. He just tried to turn around and shoot right over him and completely, completely, completely missed. People are like, man, I don't I don't see the Dallas Mavericks shooting 50% from three again. Dorian Finney-Smith ain't going to hit that many threes. You're right. 
He probably won't. But then you have Tim Hardaway Jr. hitting his threes. And if Luka has been an up-and-down three-point shooter his whole career. If he's making five of 13, it's unstoppable. It really just is. Um, who else? Who else? Um, um, Willie Carly Stein and his 15 minutes was really big for the team. This is the definition of a fun team to watch. It just really is. So shout out to the Dallas Mavericks taking his lead, and then they going back home. It's hard to say anything other than hey, the Dallas Mavericks win this series. But it's the NBA, and anything can happen. So shout out to them. Uh, at least it was fun. It was a fun game overall to watch. Did I spend ten minutes talking about that? I surely did. Let's get to game number two before we end today's episode because the Lakers bounce back. I was ready to name this video. Um, um, the city of L. The L.A. City of Winners. So it's just something corny if both of the L.A. teams won, but one of them didn't. First of all, the NBA is really just messed up by starting these games 30 minutes apart from each other. So, like, as much as I wanted to deep dive into the Clippers game or, or I guess, the Mavericks game or deep dive into this Lakers victory, I couldn't because I was trying to dual screen it and listen to commentary on one but switch it to the other when the commercial came on. But this is what I took away from the Lakers win. Um, Anthony Davis came to play. We knew he wasn't going to put up 12 a game in this whole series. And he came to play. He showed he play, showed this fire. Drew a ton of fouls. He drew a ton of fouls. But like people are always say, Kenny, look at the look at the free throw uh, dis- disparage. But it wasn't. It was one. And I know Devin Booker shot ten free throws in the last minute and a half. Um, but like when you when you talk to me about a team getting more calls than the other, put together a video and show me this this was not a foul or this was a foul. Because I was watching this game when Anthony Davis was fouled. He was fouled. You know what I'm saying? He 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 worked hard for those 21 free throws, and they needed that. LeBron James obviously had a better game than game number one, but he ain't he ain't playing with that same aggression as he has in his entire career. And maybe that goes to what he said before the playoffs even started. I'll never be at 100% because he's not driving to the lane whatsoever. They didn't really need it today. LeBron hits again another game where he hits one of the most crazy threes to ice it or put it away. Just LeBron type things. Um, Drummond. Good game from Drummond. It wasn't one of those games where you look at the stat line and be like, oh, he had 12 and 12, where he was ass. Today was a game where he had 15 and 12, and it felt like he had a positive 15 and 12 in this game, especially early into it. And like I mentioned earlier, we got the Mark Gasol minutes. The Mark Gasol minutes were great. He was flabby. He was everywhere. They were leaving him open, and he, he capitalized. There was one late in the fourth quarter where he got the ball on the wing open for three. He took like four seconds winding that shot up, and he made it. You know, the, the, they weren't guarding him out there, and he made that shot. Um, what what else came here? KCP, it, it, he he looks at the basket in the first quarter, and he'll miss his first two shots, and he'll stop looking at the basket. Uh, LeBron got to get into his ear because MVP KCP is a real thing, so we need him. I'm saying we. They need him to shoot better, but the real MVP, other than, of course, the top two guys with Dennis Schroeder playing dramatically better in game number two than game number one. But I hated this game, mostly because CP couldn't play. He finished with 22 minutes, and he didn't play down the stretch. Now, luckily for the team, I mean, maybe not luckily. They still lost. Cameron Payne as a backup has been tr- tr- uh, tremendous for them. Uh, but when it mattered the most, when it was the last couple minutes of the game, you can desperately tell that you needed Chris Paul out there. You just did. Um, Cameron Payne is cool. Devin Booker is a good playmaker, but they needed that veteran. Because you have to remember, without Chris Paul on this team, this is with the second youngest team in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So if Chris Paul is not on the court, you're running out players that have never played playoff minutes before. And you saw that in the last couple minutes, man. They couldn't get a bucket. They turned the ball over a few times and a couple of just bad shots. Chris Paul would have been like, nope, I got this. Let me get to my spot in this little mid-range area. I'm going to make a few, you know, shift the momentum a little bit, uh, especially since we're at home. But they didn't have that. I don't know what the status is going to be for my boy uh, for game number three. But it's just even in the minutes he did play, I'm like, I was just thinking to myself, just don't play him. You know, let him rest. He ain't, He's not here. I know he wants to. I know the team wants him to because he's such a big part of it. But at this point, he's more – he's not playing like himself, so I'd rather <laughs> – I'd rather have Cameron Payne play right now. Whew, what, a, what a time we live in. That is a real sentence. DeAndre Aiden followed up his first dominant game with another one, um, but obviously the Lakers also brought in their firepower with the big man. It was, it was a good game. Again, I didn't like it because Chris Paul didn't, wasn't able to play. And if Chris Paul is playing, um, they, I, think they, I think they win this game. Mikael Bridges is not a good game. Jay Crowder not a good game. I don't expect them to continue to shoot this poorly. Um, 
But it is what it is, man. It is what it is. The other game that happened, the scrimmage, um, I turned it off after the first couple minutes. Been blatantly honest with y'all. I had no interest after the first couple minutes. We were at the studio. Um, the Not the studio. The set. I think because when I say studio, people think like music studio. Not music studio. We were at the set. Um, and this game came on. We started watching it. And we were like, y'all want to go get some food? So we went to go get food. Um, looking at the box score. here. Here's my analysis strictly based off the box score. Um, Kyrie, James Harden, Kevin Durant, Joe Harris, Blake Griffin are all all very very good at basketball. So, yeah, 